Hi everyone and hi super kids. We really miss you guys so we thought we'd make a short video to say hi and see how you're doing and show you what we've been up to. Remember super kids are ordinary children doing extraordinary things through the power of God's word and spirit. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of my garden and show you some of the animals that are out and about today on the lawn. Now there are lots of animals here at the Dakin Zoo, but I'm just going to show you three of them today. So the first animal to meet is Thumper the rabbit. Now he's a really friendly rabbit and he loves cuddles and he loves strokes. Now while he's out on the lawn, we need to make sure we're looking after him properly. So we've got some food in a bowl, He's got some water in a water bottle to stay hydrated when it's hot and sunny. And he has got a little house over there to hide in if he's feeling a little bit scared. The second animal is just this way, so follow me. So the second animal I want to show you is a hermit crab and he's called Harry. Now he's quite shy, so he's probably hiding. Let's see if we can find him. So here he is, hiding in his shell. Now he is a little bit of a diva and he does like to change his shells. So in his tank he's got lots of different shapes and sizes of shells to choose from. He's also got a little sandy beach area, lots of fresh water and some fresh food in case he gets hungry. At the moment he's being a little bit shy and staying in his shell. So we'll pop him back in his house so he can hide in the soil. The last animal I want to show you is the tortoises. So over here I have got two tortoises. They are both marginated tortoises that come from the Mediterranean. The big one is a boy called Bubba and the little one is a girl called Sweet Pea. Now they are out and about here today enjoying the sunshine because sunshine is really good for them and they've also got lots of food in their run of dandelions because dandelions are their favorite treat. Now these guys are a little bit tricky to look after because they need to be kept nice and warm and in the winter they have to hibernate which means they go to sleep for a very long time but because it's spring they've woken up from their hibernation and they're enjoying the sunshine and they're ready for the summer. So that's the three animals that are out and about in the garden today. So you will have noticed that winter is finally over and spring is here. While you've been playing in your garden, you will have seen it's getting hot and sunny and there's lots of new life springing up all around. You might have noticed that some plants are starting to flower, like this one here. There's new shoots and new flowers appearing everywhere in the garden. Now flowers are really important for bugs and bees especially. And we've also got a little bee hotel here to support bees in our garden because they're great at pollinating flowers and plants and crops and we really need to look after our bees. Now if we go this way, I'm gonna show you some other things that we have in our garden to encourage local wildlife. Over here, we've got a bird bath. So it's really important to provide birds with fresh water for drinking and bathing. We've also got a bird table with lots of seed on it, different types of seed for different types of birds, and a bird box, so encouraging birds to nest in our garden. All over the garden we have put up bird boxes and bird feeders to support lots of different species of bird. Over here we've got three different types of bird feeders and we can sit in our conservatory and watch them feeding. Some of the species that we have seen include great tits, blue tits, chaffinches, sparrows, long-tailed tits and we've even seen the occasional woodpecker and sparrowhawk here in the garden. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things that you might be able to do in your own garden. So the first thing is you might want to make your own bird feeder. And these are really easy to make out of wood and wire and you can pop any type of seed in it and just encourage some birds to come and visit your garden. Another easy project is a bug hotel. 
So lots of little nooks and crannies and holes for bugs and bees and spiders to hide in. Now these are really good because we want to encourage lots of different species of bugs to make our garden more bug friendly, bird friendly, and lots of animals actually feed on bugs. So it's great to encourage bug life in your garden. And what about doing some planting? You might want to try growing your own veg, or you can plant some seeds for flowers. Very easy with some little pots or just a little patch of earth in your garden. So there's loads that you can do to get out and about and enjoy the sunshine. So keep yourselves busy and keep safe. I hope you really enjoyed the tour of our garden and all the animals and you heard Ruth talking about the life and the new life and the flowering and all the things that are happening in our garden and I'm going to be telling you a story today that talks about life and eternal life and what makes Easter so important and you might have heard you might have um, wondered why you know people are having such a tough time at the moment and things aren't great in the world but the Bible talks about this promise that Jesus came that we may have life and life in all its fullness and it links together with this Easter story that we're going to be sharing. Now one of the other things that Ruth does is every Easter she creates this Easter tree a bit like a Christmas tree and on every egg she paints something beautiful and to help me tell the story today she's painted two eggs this year that are really going to help us tell the story and this story is about God's rescue plan for each and every one of us. So this is the Easter story and it's the story of Jesus Christ who was the Son of God who came as a man to earth and lived his life completely blameless, not a single mistake, not a single thing wrong with one goal in mind and that goal was to save mankind. He came so we might have eternity of life with him. And the Easter story starts in this moment on this egg here where Jesus was crucified. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the perfect one, was crucified on a cross. And in that moment where he died, he died because he loved us so, so much. He died that we might have a relationship with him. And when he died, it, he said, it is finished. And in that moment of pain, and in that moment, all the sin and death in the world went on to him, and he died for us, that we might be free. And the great thing is, is that death was not the end. Three days later, as he prophesied, the tomb was empty. And in Matthew 28, it says this, Mary and Mary, and Mary Magdalene went to the tomb, and they saw an angel there. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you. Jesus is alive. On the cross when he died the cross wasn't the end because three days later he resurrected he was resurrected from the dead the champion the victorious one Jesus is alive and at Easter time we ask ourselves these four questions do you believe that Jesus loves you do you believe that he died on the cross for you do you believe that when he died on the cross, all our sin and mistakes could be forgiven? We only have to ask, Jesus, will you forgive me? Forgive me all my sins. And then the last question is, do you choose to follow Jesus today and every day forevermore? And that's what's so amazing about the Easter story. In that moment of choice, we can choose to live for Jesus and we can choose then to have eternity of life and a life on this earth that is so amazing, so incredible. Jesus is alive. And I remember it with my family. And how we remember it is we go to, we get our Easter eggs on, on Easter and we go to the top of the stairs and my mum and dad used to say to me, roll the egg down as a symbol of the tombstone being rolled away that sign and symbol that Jesus was no longer dead but he is alive and he died for all of my sins and transgressions that I can have relationship 
living relationship with Jesus every day. So with your parents, pop up to the top of your stairs, get their permission first, and if you have some yummy chocolatey goodness, roll it down the stairs for some fun. Look guys, we miss you, we love you, we're praying for you, and we just pray that God's blessing rest over you in this time. Lots of love from me and Ruth.